Hi, my name is Dan Van Luden. I'm a data scientist here at Wayfair. Today, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the foundational assumptions of experimentation and linear regression. I hypothesize that there's a Teddy effect. That is, that if we put Teddy on uh, the top of the dog beds page, there's going to be more sales on that dog beds page. Now, we can test this with an experiment. We could sometimes show Teddy at the top of the page, and then we could compare demand between when we show Teddy and when we don't. But there are three key assumptions here to make sure that our estimate is unbiased. First, random assignment. This means that we need an apples to apples comparison between this treatment and control group. You can imagine that if we only gave the treatment to people who had been shopping for dog beds before, but then never bought them, we'd have a very, un or we'd have a very biased effect. Um, number two is excludability. This means that the only treatment we apply to the treatment group is the treatment of interest, of putting Teddy at the top of the page. If we also found the 50% of people in the treatment group we thought would find Teddy the cutest and showed them a link on Wayfair's homepage saying, click here to see a picture of a cute dog, and it would bring them to the dog beds page, again, that would bias our estimate of the Teddy effect. And we wouldn't be able to tease out whether it was the link or showing Teddy at the top of the page that actually caused the difference in sales. Third, non-interference. This means that the treatment we apply to one group cannot affect the other group. So for example, if we had low stock uh, during the course of this experiment of dog beds, and Teddy caused some people to buy some dog beds in the treatment group, such that they were out of stock for the control group and they couldn't buy them there, this would bias our effect because the treatment is negatively impacting the control group. All right, let's say we run the experiment with these assumptions, and now we want a model um, that actually can capture the Teddy effect. Linear regression is great because it has such interpretable coefficients. And here at Wayfair, we usually use a more advanced version of it. Here, I'm modeling sales as a function of whether or not we showed Teddy to the customer. And this beta one is exactly the Teddy effect. Again, we're most interested in making sure that our estimate beta one is unbiased or consistent. And this assumption right here of exogeneity exactly corresponds back to these experimental assumptions. For example, if we showed the link um, to some people in the treatment group, then we would have correlation between um, showing Teddy uh, and showing the link. And we'd also have correlation between showing the link and sales. So we wouldn't have exogeneity anymore. And our estimates would no longer be consistent. We can account for this, though, by adding another variable to this regression, representing whether or not the link was shown. Now, we've taken away the correlation between t and the error term. So again, we have consistent estimates. All right, what are some other gotchas and tips that I can give about linear regression? First, let's talk about collinear features. Um, I often hear people saying that they're going to drop features from their regression because they're highly collinear. This often makes sense in a prediction context because having highly collinear features means that the variance of your predictions is going to be very high. But in the context of causal inference, we don't want to drop variables just because they're highly collinear if they could be confounding variables because we care much more about unbiased and consistent estimates than we do about precise estimates. All right, number two, we don't need all of the assumptions of OLS in order to get unbiased estimates. Here, homoscedasticity and the normality of the error term are mostly used in evaluating the variance of our uh, estimates. And for that, I'd rather just use non-parametric bootstrapping anyway. Okay, number three, interpreting interactions. So let's say I have a theory that showing the link means that the Teddy effect will be different. So I add a third um, variable here, that's L times T, and then I'm going to say that the Teddy effect is no longer just beta 1, but it's beta 1 plus beta 2. Well, if we didn't randomly assign L, then we can't interpret beta 1 plus beta 2 as causal. We'd have to interpret it as conditional on us having selected that kind of customer to see the link. All right, and then number four. So 
If we're thinking about the variance of our estimates, we need to make sure that we account for correlation between subjects. For example, if the same customer comes to the site 100 times during the course of the experiment, we can't model that as 100 independent visits because then we're going to vastly underestimate the variance of our estimates. Cool. So that's kind of just an overall summary of the assumptions of experiments and the assumptions of linear regression and some tips and tricks. I hope you learned something and come back again to learn more about Wayfair and the things we do here.